Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Shadowgate Classic. And when last we left off, we managed to get past a fire drake, then a troll, and then a cyclops to get to this part of the castle. And then here are various, um, basically bottles in, um, a laboratory. So, we're going to take them, shall we? Let's take everything that we possibly can. We'll take that. We can't take that, but we can take this bottle. We can also take this uh, test tube here. We can also take this horseshoe, because we may need it. We also can take this bottle. Lots of bottle two here. This, I believe, is bottle three. We also want to open this thing in the floor here. Uh, lab animals can be chained to this uh, stone while performing experiments on them. But if you use it, or open it, it won't open. Trying to think about how we use it then. We use it, maybe? Ah, the stone rises slowly out the floor. A shining vial is inside. The, vo the glass vial is filled with clear liquid. A sign of the cross is on it. This is holy water. We need this water. The stone descends back into place. We need that water. We also need to move into this room down here. You stand in a small garden. The only sound is the falling water in the night. We need to save right now, mainly because this room is deceptively dangerous. Let's look around. The bark on this tree shows no hint of disease, and its leaves are an awesome gold color. It's a small evergreen tree. This exquisite marble fountain is shaped into the image of a sea serpent. From its mouth spews an acidic liquid. Keyword, acidic. It's a small wooden flute. It looks like it, it could make wonderful music. How the actual, um, flute is not destroyed by the acid is another question, but clearly we just need to take it. As you reach for the flute, you touch the water and pain explodes through your hand. The water is extremely acidic and obviously not good for drinking. Oh, is that so, game? Well, let's use the water on ourself. Kneeling down next to the fountain, you drink a handful of the acidic water. You can't even scream because you no longer have a throat, let alone a larynx. We are dead. Again. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. Indeed. There is a way to bypass the uh, danger of the acidic water, and that is the gauntlet that we have. Let's go and uh, use that gauntlet. So now we're wearing this cloak, these glasses, and soon we'll be wearing this gauntlet. A single gauntlet. Use gauntlet on self. You place the gauntlet on your hand. It feels just like it was made for you. Now we can take the flute. By using the silver gauntlet, you remove the flute easily. The sound of the water splashing is music to your ears. And that is a hint there that you want to use the flute. The sound of the flute is very pretty indeed. Also, that little uh, musical riff there is from another MacVenture game. It seems like you wake from a dream only to find a hole in the tree. Is it real? Flute's music is like magic. It is like magic. That is a very important item. It's a ring, set within a large black sapphire. Oh yes, we're, we're going to take it. Set within is a dark black sapphire. The ring is in hand. So let's go. We don't want to wear the ring. Oh no. That ring is for another use. Oh, oh, and the torch is running out. Okay, let's deal with this. Do not wish to die, not to this. There we go, careful. There we go. When you get a lot of items, that is a bad thing. You want to deal with that as soon as you can. Also, we're done in here. Let's move on. You are awed by the majestic beauty of this immense banquet hall. Well, there's a few things we uh, need to do. We need to look around everywhere, pretty much. It's a beautifully woven rug. Fair enough. Yep, it's just a beautifully woven rug. The frame of this fine mirror is laced with silver and gold. It's 
the family crest of Sir Dugan himself. It's a silk tapestry. You know what, we're gonna take everything we can. The crest is in hand. The mirror is in hand. Can we take the tapestry? No. You know what else we could take? That key that's under the rug. I'm not kidding. There's a key under that rug, and the only way to deal with it is to use a torch on it. The rug quickly catches on fire and burns away. A key can be seen underneath. How you're meant to know there's a key there? Who knows? But let's take it. Key 4 is in hand, and now it is time for which key opens which door? The game. Does this key open this door? Yes. It won't, however, open any of the other doors. So let's see if key 5 will open this door. No, but it will open the other door. Here we go, let's uh, have a look in here, shall we? You can't actually die in this room apart from, say, using the sword on yourself or using the torch on yourself. There aren't any enemies in here. So all the doors are now open, and let's just pick, I don't know, this door. It appears to be a sphinx. It looks at you indifferently. Also, there is a solution to a puzzle in the stairway here. I'm going to uh, just write it down here. I'm going to have a uh, three up, and then up, up, down, then up, down, down, and then up, down, up. I've just written that down. It's probably not going to be of any use. Hint, it's of exceptional use. But it's a very useful thing to do. Also, let's save, because we're about to do something silly. We're going to look around here first. Through this portal, you can see the moon hovering over the darkened mountains. The strange, eerie flame burns silently. We can't take these torches. You can't indeed. Let's have a look at um, the fact that we've stumbled upon a sphinx. It has the body of a head, the body of a lion rather, and the head of a man. It has the body of a head. No, no it doesn't, Kiko. It has the body of a lion. That would be odd if it had the body of a head. I don't want to think about that creature. Of course, the first thing we should do now that we've found a sphinx is to attack it. Surely nothing bad will happen when we attack the, uh, the Sphinx? Am I right? Wrong! Suddenly, the room begins to fade. It seems that the Sphinx's magic has taken you to the Troll Bridge. Oh, that's okay. I'm sure the Troll will be happy to see- Oh! The Troll says you must pay a toll of one gold coin. We no longer have the, um... We no longer have the spear. The troll stares at you. I'm sure we can just avoid paying. The troll blows up like a volcano and throws his spear at your chest. I can understand why the troll might be a little mad. The spear pierces your chest and exits through your back. That is some strength. We are dead. Again. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. Indeed it is. You know what? Let's not attack the Sphinx, shall we? Let's instead talk to the Sphinx. Hello, how are you? Greetings! It doesn't seem to understand what you say. Very well, let's just move past the Sphinx. As you move, the Sphinx spoke. Who are you? No one may pass without my permission. To pass, you must answer a riddle. It has towns, but no houses. Forests, but no trees. Rivers, but no fish. Dost thou know? Bring me the answer to my riddle, and I shall let thee pass. This is a random um, part of the game, in the sense that um, the item can be something very different, and this is the reason why we've been carrying all sorts of rubbish with us as we've been going along. The answer to this one is a map. You have correctly answered my riddle, warrior. Thou may now pass. Thank you! Thank you very much. A telescope is beside the window. A star map is on the wall. This must be an observatory. Indeed! Let's have a look at everything. It's an ancient leather-bound parchment. A 
as you peer through the telescope, you are amazed by the clarity of the night sky. Through this portal, you can see the hovering... the moon hovering over the darkened mountains. You can see the hovering! It is horrifying! Also, in the NES version, this star was a lot less obvious. It's an ornate carving of a shooting star. The object is made of silver and is extremely heavy. What is behind it? Oh, we can't actually look at what's behind it until we take the actual star. Let's take the star. The star is in hand. We'll also open the scroll. Scroll 5 is open. You read the scroll. Observing the stars, the throne constellation appears once every five summers. Legend says it is the portal to another land. There is your hint about the fact that the uh, a throne we will encounter later will take us somewhere. Let's have a look at this chart. It's a map of the known galaxy. You can see billions and billions of stars. The map seems to be only loosely attached to the wall. Well, in that case, let's take it. Oh, let's open it? The star map is open. Ah! Let's have a look at this. The rod is made of cast iron. We want that rod. We shall take that rod. And now we shall save. There is no way to die in this room apart from throwing yourself out of one of these windows. We've already done that before. So let's move up. You are so captivated by the woman's beauty that you momentarily forget her predicament. Yes, in the moonlight she is even more beautiful. Let's have a look here. It's some sort of spike that is made of precious metals. Ouch! The tips are as sharp as needles. That is in fact one of the three items we need for the Staff of Ages. Also, there is a window. Also, here is a chain. The silver chain seems to be strongly secure to the wall. This fine lass lies upon the floor, chained to the wall. She is extremely beautiful. Well, let's see, um, let's talk to her, shall we? It doesn't seem to understand what you say. The, um, the use of the word it there is very, very important. Let's save, shall we? Because obviously what we need to do is we need to take this item here. Bad idea! With a loud roar, the wolf pounces on you, taking your life. Yes, the woman was in fact a werewolf, and that was not a very secure chain. We are dead. Again. The wolf's powerful jaws rip your throat out. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. Indeed. But we do have something we could use to defeat the werewolf. Let's move up here. Hello again! How are you? This is a massive trap to get us killed. Fortunately, we have an item that will deal with a werewolf. We picked it up a very long time ago. Do you remember the, uh... That's a little bit further back, actually. Do you remember the arrow made of silver that's not uncommon from the elven lands? Let's see how a werewolf likes a silver arrow, shall we? We're gonna throw it Stonekeep style! Ha! Your aim is true as you plunge the silver arrow into the beautiful woman. The beautiful lady suddenly transforms into a wolf. The wolf is very dead. This looks like your typical dead werewolf. Your arrow is deeply lodged into its body. We shall take the blade. We need that blade. And we actually need nothing else here. So let's move uh, away, shall we? And down. This is one of the items we need to complete the game. Hello, how are you? We're just never going to come back up here again, okay? Let's move on. If we do, we have the items that we need to actually uh, do that. So let's save. One puzzle solved. I don't remember which room we need to go into next, so let's go into this one. Ah, we're heading a little too far forward right now. We've entered a small corridor with two arched doorways wait patiently for you. Let's take these torches while we're here. The torch is in hand, we have ten. And this torch is in hand, we have eleven. Let's move back, shall we? 
back and this way. Although the evening air is cool, the small circular room radiates a fervent heat. Ah! This seems like an important room. A flame burns within this brazier, lighting the entire room. Ah, here's another one of those death windows! It's a wooden ladder, but more importantly, this horn is forged of flawless platinum. Its beauty is unbelievable! Well, obviously we need to take this horn! This horn is imperative to our quest, and I'm not kidding. Ah. A large fireball suddenly appears in the room and causes you to shield your eyes. When you open them, you notice that the fire has changed into something far more menacing. The Hellhound makes this hot room even hotter. There must be a way to cool the room off before you roast. Of course there's a way to cool off the room. It's called stabbing this Hellhound with a sword. Because the sword has always worked against enemies that are alive. Have at thee! The demon dog snarls and pounces on you. Its teeth sink deep into your flesh. We are dead. Again. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. Indeed it is. What we need to do is we need to continue right now, because we need to now move back into that room over there and basically do it correctly. We have an item that's perfectly suited for dealing with a hellhound, actually. Hello, how are you? Dramatic entrance! Unfortunately, your entrance is very short-lived, as we have a potion that's going to work really, really well. With less a potion and more... holy water. Holy water does wonders against hellhounds, as you can see here. The holy water has sent the hellhound back to the place where it was spawned. Goodbye! Have a nice trip! The flames died out. The room is quiet, as though nothing had happened. The horn is ours. Marvelous! Now, let's save. Because even though we managed to deal with that problem, there are still many other problems. Up the ladder. As you stand on the turret, an eerie blue dragon appears in the clear starry sky. Hello, how are you? It's a dragon, folks! It's a wyvern, actually, which is a different kind of dragon. This beastie is a distant cousin of the dragon, but is smaller and fiercer. However, this rather heavy talisman is made of gold and is extremely sharp among its edges. It shines with an incredible brilliance. Well, clearly we need to take this. I'm sure the dragon won't mind, right? Wrong. With the speed of lightning, the wyvern wraps its tail around your neck. You die, screaming silently. We are dead. Again. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. We can deal with the wyvern, though. I'm pretty sure the wyvern will, uh, taste the blade of our sword! It's only a wyvern after all, it's not actually a, uh, a fully sized dragon, maybe it's a bit smaller? I'm sure we can take on a wyvern with a sword. The sword's worked so well up until now! Have at thee, dragon! Oh. Turns out we're a little too slow still. And once again, we die, screaming silently. Hey again, we're dead. Exactly the same way, pretty much. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. But we will not be defeated by this wyvern. Oh no. There is a way that we can defeat this wyvern. And it's a little bit... counterintuitive in the sense that you need to think outside the box. Remember that shooting star? What do you want to use this for? We throw the shooting star at the wyvern. A star becomes a flash of light as you launch it. Kapow! Crash! It strikes the wyvern and it explodes into a million pieces! We know, because we count it. And now, the wyvern is gone. And now, we can take the talisman. Excellent. And now, we can save the game. But more importantly, we can move off the battlements! 
With a cry, you jump to your death. Yep, the game will just let you walk straight off the battlements. It takes only a couple of seconds before you hit the bottom with a thud. Oops. We're dead. Again. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. And when we come back, folks, we won't throw ourselves off the battlements. Because hey, we have the talisman, and we have the blade. We don't actually need that much more in terms of items. So, I'll catch you next time, folks, for when we come back. More Shadowgate. More peril. And probably more death. In fact, definitely more death. I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.